Let me talk my shit, I'm tired of being subtle. Word. Quarterback, I call a plays from inside a huddle. That's real. She think I'm deep. When you speak, you barely leave a puddle. Woo. Here comes trouble. See, I done rolled from the rubble. Yeah, Woo. I'm the one. Find the firefly with a better glow. Try. Better yet, find the waterfalls with a better flow. I wait. I, wait. I got peace. That's something you'll never know. Never. And I aim for the stars when I'm set and go. Yeah. Magnum opus. Mac, mac, no opus. 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 I'm magnificent. My flaws is ridiculous. Something to the raps. I adapt like an eight ball. Squad full of hustlers. All white Madonna. It smells like the Ryan the Curve. Bang all the drama. Ooh. Welcome to Pirate TV. This is episode one. I am the president of Atlanta Rest Entertainment, Joshua Wheeler, and we are coming to you from the city that's a cultural center, not just of the world, but of professional wrestling. And today we are featuring three hot matches that only Atlanta can deliver. We're going to kick it off with Chip Day, the shining light of the South against the captain, Sean Dean. But more importantly, in tonight's main event, it's going to be the Roar Women's Block A Tournament match featuring five of the hardest hitting ladies in professional wrestling. If you've never seen Roar, you are in for a treat. And also on the show, we're going to take a quick look at Fearless Musa as he faced Jack Griffin. I'm going to throw it at Danny Danger right now to call the action. Thanks for joining us on Pirate TV. I'm magnificent, my flaws is ridiculous. Something to the raps, I adapt like a. We start our the, the night hot and heavy with great action for you. Welcome to Atlanta Wrestling Entertainment presents Set It Off here at the beautiful district in Atlanta, Georgia. Our first matchup sees the former two-time Georgia Wrestling Crown Championship Day taking on the captain, Sean Dean. I am Danny Danger. I'll be calling the action for you all night long with a most unusual co-host. I will let him uh, do the introduction for himself because I don't want to mess it up. I'm, I'm a little intimidated uh, having you here. Oh, relax. Honest. I'm a snuggly little puppy doll, really. I am Talaferro. I will be your co-host for the evening, but more on me as the night goes on. Well, we started off, as I mentioned, Chip Day, the former two-time GWC champion, just losing the championship at Show of the Year 6 to ACH. What exactly is Chip Day Jay have to do here? Where What is, you know, I mean, as, as an athlete, it's, it can be very difficult once you lose the championship you know, trying to, to rebuild. Well, once you lose the title, that puts you back at the bottom, doesn't it? He has to start over, prove himself. I mean, he's here starting in the mat, you know, the first match of the night, as opposed to the main event that he was in at show of the year six. That can be devastating to one's ego, wouldn't you think? I mean, it, it very well can. And, you know, somebody, Chip Day, who's, you know, who's been, you know, professional wrestler well over 10 years in Georgia, he wears Georgia on his back. He wore... That Georgia Wrestling Crown Championship with pride, and, and here he is now, you know, having having to start, as you said, the back of the line at the very bottom. But he has a very, very tough test as somebody who's looking to be the new face of wrestling in the Southeast, Sean Dean, making his debut. It's actually a sink or swim contest for Sean. Sean is, is making his, you know, he's made a lot of waves a lot of places, but can he impress the fans and impress the crowd? And, you know, will he, if he, if he swims... You know, we may see Sean Dean a lot more in the future. If he sinks, this this may be the last time before we, you know, we see Sean again. I, mean, I know very little of this young man, but so far, technically, he is a wrestler. You can't deny that. He knows what he's doing. He's not green. He's not a rookie. Absolutely. He calls himself the captain. I mean, to, to wear that kind of moniker, one would expect that you have a lot of experience and a lot of confidence in your abilities. Now, now the story here goes that Chip Day actually went to another wrestling show here in Georgia to see the Action Wrestling Show where Sean Dean was competing. Chip had heard a lot of things about Sean and, and wanted to see, you know, see for himself firsthand in person if, you know, what Sean Dean was all about, if, he, if the hype was real. And, you know, Sean Dean had his match. Chip Day went to go talk to him and shake his hand and, uh, you know, congratulate him. And, and Dean kind of snubbed him, okay? He kind of, you know, and, and Chip, you know, somebody who was, he, he literally drove there to see him 
you know, to give him pointers and talk to him and kind of, you know, see if, if he deserved to be, you know, one of the one of the big names in Georgia. And, and Dean kind of slided him. And, you know, that Chip said, okay, you know, if that's the way you want to play, if you want to, you know, disrespect me, come to my house, you know, come to Atlanta Wrestling Entertainment, and maybe I'll teach you a little respect. You know, maybe I'll see not only what you can bring firsthand in the ring, but also, you know, maybe... Maybe the hype's not real. Maybe maybe I need to beat a little respect into you. Maybe you're not as good as some people are thinking you are. But he must be careful about such things. As the old saying goes, pride cometh before the fall. I mean, we, we've seen that quite a few times from Chip Day, where, you know, his pride and his ego kind of kind of get him in trouble. Sometimes his he is absolutely one of the best wrestlers, bell to bell, in the world. But, you know, there's a lot of times when he's let things get into his head, and it's cost him. You must be careful about letting things into your head. And I am an expert on that subject of getting into people's heads. Well, Sean Dean just put both of his boots right against the side of Chip Day's head. Chip Day there checking his teeth now. Well, he's, he's giving, look at him though. He's, he's giving a little bit of praise to Dean. He's saying, hey, you know, you got me on that one. You know, Chip was, was trying to be courteous, trying to be polite, trying to be a veteran. And, and he was trying to oh. check. I don't think Chip's gonna take too kindly to disrespect like that in his house. This could definitely heat things up considerably. I mean, De Dean, Max Recon has to step in there and separate him as Chip grabbed, grabbed Dean right across the throat. Ah, oh, come on, ref, let them fight. Well, Dean just one step, a little, little bit fast. Wow, wonderful. Amazing. The, hear the sound on that knee strike. Going right into the cover. Two. Two count only. He had him close in the corner, but golly. I mean, Chip's checking his ear. He might have a busted eardrum. That that was devastating. I loved it. It was beautiful. But Sean Dean there shows, you know, his a little bit of arrogance. He's not staying on his man. He's kind of pacing around, you know, showboating, gallivanting a little bit. And against somebody the caliber of Chip Day, that could come back to bite you. Showboating is unnecessary at times. I understand the need to really let yourself go, as it were. But to not destroy your opponent when you have them down. It, it boggles the mind. Well, Dean now, now taking control, following Chip Day around, not letting a lot of distance go between them. As you, you put a lot of distance between yourself and Chip, and he can start picking up momentum. He's got to have at least a, a fair amount of distance to start unleashing those kicks. If you stay in close quarters, you might be able to avoid the, the damage. You must stay on top of your opponent for certain. Don't let them get up. Keep them down. Break them. Dean looks now, now trying to make him signal the captain. I mean, he's, he's, yes, he's hurting the man, but I think he's trying to do more to embarrass him. To show that, that you know, I mean, I, he think he feels that Chip isn't on his level. That Chip might be the past and that Dean is the future. I do admire a certain amount of arrogance. But it can get in the way of the pain you can inflict. A little bit of pain right to the sternum. Barely a one count. Mr. Kick out at one. Getting his shoulders off the mat in quick fashion. But Dean going right back on the attack. As you mentioned, inflicting pain, trying to grind and wear down his opponent. Yes, make them tap out. Make them say it. Make them say I quit. That I take no more. Chip Day trying to, trying to get the crowd a little bit behind him. He realizes that he's quite far from the ropes, so he might have to fight and work his way out of this move. Fanatics getting behind Chip, trying to help will him in the fight. Chip going with body strikes there. Trying to create that distance you spoke of. Went for a kick. Dean pulled him in and shoved him away. Couldn't avoid that one. Dean saw it coming, just swatted Chip's feet out of the air. Chip landed hard on the back of his neck. That is the danger you face going to the top. The fall can be devastating. Absolutely, Dean, you know, was, was rocked from that kick, but still had enough, enough thought to just step out of the way. But he's not able to get, get back on his man. I think that kick took a lot out of him. I mean, his bell might be wrong. You see him just kind of holding his head, kind of stumbling around. Don't know how much he has in the tank. I don't know how much he has in this fight. But he has a lot on the line. He could dig down deep and find it. He wants a spot here. He has to earn it. 
He almost lost his spot just with a, with a small package. Here comes the Kennesaw kick machine opening up with strikes in the corner. Dean trying his best to, co to cover up if he can, but there's a whole lot of power behind those kicks and those chops. Dean charges in. Chip just a little too quick for him. Both men are getting tired. Chip cuts him with a leg drop there to the back of the neck. Going for it again. He missed it the first time. Second time the charm. Catches him on point. Goes right into the cover. One, two, three. Only a two count. Oh, come on, Chip. Don't get frustrated. Break him if you can. Chip Day has a very, very deep playbook now. Processing through his brain, seeing what he has to do. What move maneuver should come next in order to put Dean away. Chip now taking a lot of time, setting up. General knee, but Dean stepped out of the way. Oh, snaps him down. Dean's not done. Double knees right into the back. Hooks the leg deep, two. Dean almost got a win over the former champion right there. As much as I hate to admit it. Chip is very impressive digging down deep after two devastating maneuvers and finding the strength to kick out of that. I mean, that's the thing that's helped make Chip so successful. I mean, so many people over the years have told him, you don't belong, you don't have it, you can't be it. But he always digs deep. He always finds the will. He always goes out there and proves people wrong. Proves that he is absolutely one of the best. Snap that kick right to the side of Dean's head. Where are we going now, Chip? Very, very dangerous territory. Dean's trying to, trying to fight Chip off. Dean slips out the bottom. Sets him up. Kick right between the eyes. But he's not done. Snaps him down with a bomb. Big knee to the side of Chip's head. Hooks both legs. Two, three. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Chip Day once again digging down deep, kicking out. Dean seems shocked. Seems like he thought he had the champion, the former champion pinned there. What would, what would a win here mean for Dean's career, not just in Atlanta Wrestling Entertainment, but across the Southeast and the wrestling world to get a clean pinfall victory over the former two-time GWC champion? Well, that's the word, isn't it? The former champion. But still, an impressive feat nonetheless. Really could cement his place here. I mean, it absolutely could, and his, this is a sink or swim contest for Dean. A victory here would most certainly earn him future bookings. Right into the James Hook. Dean in a lot of pain. This hold does a lot of damage very, very quickly. Dean trying to power up and fight out of it. Possibly try to crawl to the ropes. Reversal. Rolls Look back. He rolled back and bridged down and had Chip pinned. Tornado kick. Dean just. But still up. Look at him finding the street to stand. General knee. He's not standing now. One, two, three. Chip Day looking impressive. Sean Dean looking impressive as well, but, but not earning the victory here. I mean, now we may find out if Dean sinks or swims. Well, the fans here in Atlanta are very forgiving of failure, unfortunately. He may have got his spot after all. Again, you're the last Chip Day, Chip. I need a few words with you. First, first match in 2020. You're the last match in the last decade. First match in I mean, if they didn't say 
know I was gonna vouch for him anyway. That kid, hell an athlete, he's kind of a dick, but <laughs> good shit, right? Right? I own it though. I don't think I don't think he's at that stage yet. Oh um, yeah, so first match in company history, first match in the decade, last match in the last decade. Uh, y'all ain't sick of me yet? No, um, uh, so, uh, I guess that makes Chip Day A1 since day one now. I guess that makes Chip Day Indy till infinity. That makes Chip Day starting his war path back to the Georgia Wrestling crowd. The title that should be mine anyway. The title that's on a guy who is our champion, but he can't be bothered to be here tonight for all you fans. Not so super. Josh, you know where my goals and my aspirations lie. I'm not here to be long-winded. My head hurts. Do you need to know anything else? I do have one more question. I know that you have said multiple times that Alex Shelley is one of your heroes. Ali Shelley does return here March 15th to face Shook. He's still technically a free agent, and he's actually said he wants to work for you one time. So, my question is, do you want to go ahead and wrestle Ali Shelley, one of your heroes, and maybe let ACH have a little bit of time to play with the other guys? Or do you want to go ahead and go straight to ACH? You have the rematch clause, that's your choice. Man. Look at God, all right. Dave versus Shelly? All right, I'll see you soon, Alex. ACH, keep that title on for Shelly. I'll be seeing you soon. Well, ACH, the Georgia Rally Crown Champion, does return on March 15th to face AJ Gray. Some say that the time is a low place. When you find out the odds ain't the only space. Opus, magnum opus, mag, magnum opus, magnum opus, mag, magnum opus, magnum opus, mag, magnum opus. I'm magnificent, my flaws is ridiculous. Something to the raps, I adapt like a. Our next match features two very impressive young up and coming stars in the world of professional wrestling. Fearless Musa earned his spot in the sink or swim match back in November and has been opening eyes ever since. Jack Griffin making his return. Same face, different name from last time. Talaferro, I know you're always looking for, for people to add to your, your stable, to your, your business end of, of managing people. Are you keeping an eye on, on matches like this specifically? You always have to keep your eyes out for someone who you think is ready to embrace what I refer to as beautiful madness. You must embrace the part of yourself that others keep suppressed. And I look for those who can unleash it. Well, I know you will be watching this match very closely. Musa has been extremely impressive with his high-flying arsenal, winning his sink or swim match with a beautiful shooting star press. He is absolutely lives up to the name he is 100 percent fearless he told me personally he only fears one man and that man is god anybody in the ring has nothing nothing that he can be afraid of he will do anything to achieve the win and show his greatness very impressive griffin looking great with that arm drag but now getting his bell rung with an enziguri from musa and musa appears to have an injury but still is competing nonetheless on He's that right hand. 
Yes, he, a right hand. He seems to have a brace there on the right hand. Don't know the extent of that injury. How it possibly will play into the match. Didn't seem to slow his athleticism down. He looked like he was going to go out for a dive, but Griffin just kind of walked out of the way. Griffin daring him now. Oh, and he called him very smart. <laughs> Got him and tossed him on the hardwood floor. Ladies and gentlemen, there are no mats out there. This place, most days of the week, is a nightclub. That is hard wooden floor with cement underneath. Very, very little give, if any at all. Oh, it's a beautiful thing when someone hits it, isn't it? Griffin continues the attack. Looks to be trying to, trying to deliver more damage. Oh, slamming Musa on the apron. Now kicking the back. It seems that he has targeted the back of his opponent. Softening him up for the kill. Rolls right into the cover. Only finds himself a two count. And it cannot be understated that the apron of the ring is not very forgiving. Well, it is, it is a steel beam and there's wood boards that lay across the edge of it. It is absolutely no give. Griffin now trying to, to wear down Musa, puts him in a sleeper hold, grinding him, trying to take his breath away as he knows that a faster athlete can gas out quickly. So he is trying to speed up that process to slow down possibly the faster opponent in Musa. And moves such as that do not look devastating, but they have a powerful effect on the body. They can do a lot of damage very quickly. You see Musa already looking a little bit slower than he did at the start of the match. Now just trading elbows, center of the ring. Griffin might have lured him in there, ducked it. Musa able to shove him away. Big drop kick. Once again, the athleticism on display there leading into the drop kick to kind of confuse and disorient your opponent before the maneuver. Power slam sets him up. Going up. Big moonsault from the second rope. One, two. Only a two count. Musa can't allow a lot of time to elapse. Must, He's got stay, must stay on top of him, don't let him breathe. He's now trying to argue with Stan Robinson about the count. Not a wise move. You're not going to change his mind. Musa might have knocked some of the breath out of himself with that maneuver. Musa taking his time now. Griffin able to come and connect with that running uppercut. Setting him up but he's fighting back. Musa's fighting back with those elbows, trying to get out of it. Inverted DDT, center of the ring. Hooks the leg, two. Only a two count. Griffin able to get the shoulder up. Musa's still allowing himself to get frustrated. He's not, I don't know if, as you mentioned, the sleeper hold, it can do a lot of damage. Maybe it, it took some of the wind out of him and doing that that moonsault and connect. I mean, you put a lot of impact on your own solar plexus. I mean, he could be have knocked some of the wind out of himself. He seems to just be taking a lot of time after each maneuver. Those are the chances you take when you use your own body as a weapon. Griffin now just running back and forth, connecting with strikes. Spin kick to the back of the neck. There's a kick right to the side of the head. Musa could be out, too. Don't sit there concerned about it. Stay on top of him. Griffin thought he had him after those two devastating strikes to the head. Musa showing a little bit of veteran instinct there, rolling to the outside. Knows he cannot lose the match on the outside of the ring. Orihara moonsault by Griffin. Levels Fearless Musa on the outside. Griffin showing he is without fear as well. Very impressive young man. I may have to pay more attention to him. Musa down there. Got a little cobwebs in the brain. Griffin tries to get him in as quickly as he can. Knows he can only win inside the four ropes, the four corners. Griffin looks to be setting something up. 
Musa saw it come and turns him inside out with the clothesline. The impact, could you hear it? I heard it all the way up here. Both men are down. A pivotal point in this matchup. Who will be able to get up first? Who will be able to go on the offensive? Oh yes, by the hair, lovely. <laughs> Musa now trying to control Kirby Griffin's head. Big back swing and strike. Griffin catches a leg, now setting up into a backslide. Only gets the two count there. Comes back fast with the kick. Griffin now exposing the bare knee. Looks like he might be trying to put Musa away. Musa pulls down the low bridge. Once again gonna fly. Up and over! Musa crashing hard onto Griffin, but ate a lot of that floor himself. Again, the chances you take when you use your own body as a weapon, but I, I admire both men, really. This is a beautiful thing to watch. Musa now back up, rolling Griffin back in. Musa looks to be going up to, to put the finishing touches on his opponent. A man without fear with a shooting star press. One, two, three. Very impressive. As you mentioned, Talaferro, outstanding. Great showing by both men. Griffin looking great even in defeat. You commented on the athleticism. Something both men possessed in abundance. Fearless Musa getting the win here. Putting himself in line for more matches and future big match opportunities. They show a shine of respect there. champion and you could all learn to bow down to the queen pin opus mag magnum opus magnum opus mag magnum opus magnum opus mag magnum opus magnum opus mag magnum opus i'm magnificent my flaws is ridiculous something to the raps i adapt like a
This action's, this action's starting even before the bell rings. Well, this is what Roar is all about. No rules. And I knew these two were not going to make it to the ring. They've been going back and forth on social media all week, all month. I mean, this is the Roar title tournament block A match. There are five women here, but right now it is a one-on-one -on -one brawl between Marina Tucker and Danny Jordan. I mean, Danny's trying to run. Marina's on the chase. Now, now everybody else is following Perez, Bell, Royale, all following out there. I mean, th this match isn't even underway. The ref hasn't rung the bell. You are correct. It is not official yet. I mean, it's... I mean, Ma referee Max Recon out there. I mean, we, we have some of the same wrestlers trying to separate Danny Jordan and Marina Tucker. As you mentioned, they've been going at each other for weeks on social media about who the real mean girl of professional wrestling is. And now they're going to prove it. Lovely. I mean, they, some of the others came out with, you know, with trying to play to the crowd. And before Danny even got into the ring, Marina just ran out and, and met her midway. I mean, we still haven't gotten a bell. And yep. The other three just seem content to watch these two destroy one another. I mean, they're not, I mean, Danny, Danny came out with 3MP, who, who's now uh, getting himself involved. In, I mean, it's not a match yet, but he's still getting his hands dirty. Oh, yes, 3MP. One of my fellow, the word you call us is managers. He's a businessman. I can't stand it. Well, Tucker now, I mean, took, took a sharp hit to the face on the side of the ring. And now the others are going to get involved. I mean, it's we we still haven't gotten the bell yet. I don't. This match still isn't officially underway, but it is chaos. You heard, you heard Wheeler Royale, the replacement for Ruthless Lala, unable to attend tonight. There's Catalina Perez throwing super kicks and a German suplex, dropping Jordan on the back of her head. Yes, if Lala was here, I can assure you she would be the one walking out with the championship. I mean, Lala was an odds-on favorite, especially with you in her corner, Talaferro. Absolutely. She's but, ruthless, after all. But Perez is now showing how ruthless she can be. Diving out onto Tucker. We thought she was going to go for a big move on Royale down in the ring, but taking a dive onto Tucker. This match is elimination rules. The last woman standing will move on to the finals to crown the first Roar champion. Perez up top, drops the big elbow on Royale. Doesn't go for a cover though. There's Marty Bell, the Roar original, making her return after several years away. Rolling elbow, just put the lights out on Perez. One down, four to go. Marty Bell showing exactly what made her a Roar original and has made her a superstar across the wrestling world. But Danny Jordan taking the advantage. Yes, as long as these two are in proximity, this is what you're going to get. There's Danny Jordan's burn book, as she calls it. Putting the, puts the faces and names of people she wants to destroy. Marina Tucker using it against her and getting herself the three count. And just like that, there are three. There, Marty Bell hooks a small pack. The schoolgirl roll up. Tucker still focused on her win over, over Jordan. Found herself the, sm the end of a schoolgirl. Marty Bell showing her wealth of experience over most of these women and picking her spots. The most experienced with the youngest, the rookie in this match, Shalonda Royale, has made quite a lot of waves across the wrestling world in her year as a professional and already chasing a championship. Impressive. Marty Bell is a well-seasoned veteran back in the days when Roar was in the quad. 
They would, matches were mostly brawls involving any and everything that wasn't nailed down. Marty earned her stripes there and has since gone on to great things, to make an impact, to show her power. But here she is back in AWE, back in Roar to show that she is the true queen. And this is what makes Roar wonderful. Roar, excuse me, wonderful to me. No rules. Let them break each other. Let them beat each other to a pulp. It's beautiful. It is at the referee's discretion, but pinfalls and submissions can only happen in the ring. Anything else is, is, is anything goes. As we saw the match pretty much start before it even started on the outside. Marty Bell teaching the rookie a lesson here. Showing all the dirty truck, the tricks that have yes. made her quite a success. Nor normally in a match, you'd be, the referee would be counting, trying to separate. There, I mean, she can hold this on till, till Royale's unconscious. I mean, Bell just showing disrespect to, to the fighting siren. The Royale has made her name by not giving up, by fighting through adversity. When people said she couldn't, when people thought she was down and out, she fought back. She proved them wrong. I do admire a fighting spirit. But it appears the rigors of this type of match are taking their toll. I mean, Bell still on the attack, dictating the pace, bringing this fight where she wants to, out in the crowd. This is not a technical wrestling contest as much as this is a fight. Bell making a statement here, showing that she, that she is an, as a Roar original, deserves to be the first champion. Turnabout is fair play. Yes. Royale bringing the fight back, but, but Marty hits her hard with the forearm. Royale answering with one of her own. Just trading hard, hard shots there on the floor. And I must be honest with you, it is action like this is what brought me here in the first place. To see this night in and night out when the shows are on, it's wonderful. Be Bell letting us know that the wall's okay after Royale's head cracked the side of it. Not sure we're, con we're as concerned about the wall as, as we are Royale's safety. Now we get the match back in the ring. Senior official Max Recon rolls back in. But continuing the disrespect by Bell. Not taking Royale serious. It goes back to what I've said before. Too much showboating can lead to your downfall. Taking a lot of time there, setting up. She loves to use the pedigree. Earned her quite a lot of victories over the last couple years. Royale's Royal Flush! Drops Bell right on her head. One, two, three! And wow. the rookie drops the veteran. I mean, I mean, a lot of people would call that an upset. A seasoned veteran like Bell getting dropped on her head, but that's how quickly you can win a match. Jalanda Royale. And wisely getting out of the ring. Wins, winning block A here and will go to fight for the championship against the block B finals. Winner. She is one step away from being the first Roar champion after on the night in which she makes her debut. Taking the place, I might add, of Ruthless Lala. Marty Bell arguing with the official. The fiery Dominican temper there showing as, as Bell chasing after the official, chasing after Josh Wheeler. Yes, kick him, hit him, do something, hit him.
Well, that's it for Pirate TV. Again, I am the president, Joshua Wheeler. And if you like what you see, share it, subscribe, comment, and always tell a friend. We're back in Atlanta, the District of Atlanta, on March 15th, and we'll be back here on all your social channels with Pirate TV. Dang!